Hey, it's a little falava. Lance Alva, Dr. John Peterson here, TE2 Edge Sports Cars, coming at you live and direct from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, yeah, hope everybody's doing great out there. Tuesday's in the bag and uh, had another good day. I uh, hope you did too. Hope you're living blessed. Um, yeah, man, I've been watching some YouTube channels. Uh, of course, the content, uh, sports cards, vintage sports cards, baseball cards, football cards, etc. There seems to be a lot of drama going on right now in the hobby. Um, and some of it is not really great. I mean, it looks and sounds pretty toxic. I mean, uh, she collects, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, read some of the different posts that have been on her YouTube page. And wow, some of that stuff is not cool. Definitely mean spirited. Um, first of all, it's not easy being, the, you know, one of the few females uh, on the scene in the hobby. And secondly, uh, she's a person of color. She's Asian. So, man, I tell you what, uh, we got to support each other. We got to keep uh, things above bar, of course, and call out different things that are, uh, you know, a little bit specious in the hobby. But overall, I think we got to stick together. You know, we got to unify and and do what's right by the hobby, do what's right by especially the young people in the hobby. Because um, they're watching the adults and they're seeing all this. And uh, I'm sure they're just like shaking their heads like these guys don't have it together. <laughs> the vast majority of people are great. The vast majority of content creators I have a ton of respect for. And I don't even, I can't really even think of anyone that I don't have respect for. Everybody's got their own kind of angle. Everybody's got their own niche they should have their own niche um so do you make no apologies about it um but just don't do things that are uh shady basically is what it comes down to i think aih calls it hanky panky <laughs> get a crack out of that uh but i just call it shady you know shady stuff keep it above bar and uh, do right by people and good things will happen to you and um you know if you treat people with respect and kindness, you'll get respect and kindness back. <clears throat> so sorry, excuse me. Got a frog in my throat here. So um, yeah, so anyway, I mean, I know there's been the vintage breaks piece and the BBCE piece. I just bought something off of BBCE earlier today. Um, and, and I had a great experience. So I'm not overly concerned about BBCE, honestly. Um, you know, people make mistakes. It happens. I've made mistakes. I'm sure you've made mistakes. And, uh, you know, the big thing is that you got to learn from your mistakes. That's the big piece. Um, you've got to adapt, use those mistakes and failures as opportunities to learn and grow. And, um, you know, you'll be stronger for it in the long run. Don't ever forget how you got to where you're at. Um, don't let the worst get the better of you. Um, it's a saying that a good friend of mine said to me recently. Don't let the worst get the better of you. Meaning, stay above it. You know, stay positive. Stay engaged. Lean in. You know, um, when it feels like you want to step out, just lean back into it and, and do your thing. Um, so... Anyway, it's worked for me. I've had my ups and downs in life. Definitely, definitely made some mistakes and some things that I wish I would have done differently. But still, still here I am. You know, still here I am um, doing my thing, doing my YouTube videos. No, I don't get tens of thousands of views, but that's okay. Because I get feedback from people that um, do watch the program and do watch my channel and love it and really enjoy it. So, hey, man. My big thing is do you, don't hate, congratulate. Don't hate, congratulate, and don't let the worst get the better of you. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to share with folks today, this is pretty straightforward, um, is I've been continuing <laughs> to add cards to the My Slabs page, and I thought I'd go through the oh, a dozen or so cards that I added um, earlier today and this morning um, so you get a sense of what's on there. You can find me on My Slabs, just search TE2 hit the magnifying glass or the return button and uh, it'll take you to my page. I think I've got, well, let's see here. 
Oh, I'm looking at the my size page right now. And uh, let's see what it says. Oh, looks like their server is down. Huh, interesting. That's too bad. Okay, all right, well, we'll come back to it. Anyway, myslabs.com, that's where you can find me. You can also find me on eBay, RJP2532. I've got a few things that are currently on auction right now. A 58 Tops Clemente, 59 Yogi Berra, um, a couple other pieces that are vintage, but not in great, the greatest shape. I mean, they're not in terrible shape, but they're not in like a seven or an eight. <clears throat> Okay, first card, 1960 Tops, Brooks Robinson, five. Nineteen sixty Tops, Willie Mays. This card is interesting, it's diamond cut. You can see that it's diamond cut. I mean, the, the corners are good. Of course, the centering left to right isn't great, but Still ended up being a five, which I thought was pretty good. I was thinking it was going to be a four, four and a half. Here's a Al Kaline, 1960 Tops. I actually sold this card today. Uh, somebody picked it up for 50 bucks on my slabs. So um, I'll be packaging this up. Actually, I should probably set it aside. And Somebody also bought the Mad Stork rookie card, Ted Hendricks. 1972 tops. Ted Hendricks was a fantastic outside linebacker, tall guy. I think he's like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, I uh, went to the University of Miami and uh, had a pretty illustrious career, if not a somewhat strange career. Some of his antics were <laughs> pretty interesting, but he played for the Raiders um, and uh, was a key member of their defense back in the late 70s and uh, the early 80s. Also played for the Green Bay Packers. A lot of people aren't aware of that. Uh, Ted Hendricks was a Green Bay Packer for a short period of time. So I think I sold this for 20 bucks. Yeah, not worth a ton. His his cards don't carry a ton of value, but in a 5.5, um, you know, it's a pretty nice card for being from 1972. You're seeing a common theme with the 60 tops. Here's a Nelly Fox. I'll just get a 5.5. It's .5. bad. Got a Bill Mazeroski, 1960 tops. Now, 60 was the year that Bill Mazeroski hit the World Series game winning home run. 10 to 9 versus the New York Yankees. And uh, some call it the greatest home run ever. If you have not seen the video of him hitting that home run, you have got to check that out. It is awesome. And he hits that thing a ways. It's uh, over 400 feet. He hits that ball. I want to say it's like 409, 410. <clears throat> Jeez, I'm so sorry. My throat. I feel like I've been smoking cigarettes, even though I haven't. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry about that. I hate that when people clear their throat on their videos and I tend to do it. So I apologize for that. But I also want to be able to talk. Um, so yeah, this is the year the Pirates beat the Yankees, 1960 World Series. And Mazeroski hit the, the game winner. So check that out on YouTube if you don't, if you haven't seen it or, or you haven't had a chance to check that out. Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks, uh, very popular player. Uh, one of the great second basemen of all time. Probably top three, hit over 500 home runs, which is phenomenal for a second baseman. And uh, all-time Cub great. I mean, I'm trying to think who's a more well-loved and famous Cub than Ernie Banks. I don't know, Hack Wilson? I don't know, that's old school, so. <clears throat> Here's an interesting card that I found in a, uh, a dig um, at a local card store. It's an Archie Manning rookie card, 72 tops. Got the nice haircut there. It's a six. Nineteen sixty All Star Tops, Eddie Matthews. I think I sold this one too. Pretty sure I did. I'm gonna have to set this aside. 
That's a great card. This is the second one of these I've owned. Um, actually, I think I've got another one in a CSG slab somewhere in my in my stuff here. So let's set that one aside. This is a nice card. 1960 top, second year Bob Gibson in a six. Uh, centered, very centered. Um, I mean, not perfect top to bottom, but left to right looks pretty much 50 50 spot on. A young Bob Gibson. Uh, I'd say he and Marichal are the pitchers of the decade from the 1960s. Well, Sandy Koufax. It's kind of hard to argue with Koufax's first, what, 60, his run up through the Mid 60s was just incredible. But Gibson, I mean, he had one of the lowest ERAs, if not the lowest of all time. What was it, 1.18? I think that was in 68. Um, in fact, I think they lowered the mound uh, by a few inches uh, after that season because he was just so incredibly dominant. Could be wrong on that, but I, I want to say that that's what happened. Um, yeah, so a great card. I love the 60 tops, and it's a, it's a great card. Yeah, probably a couple hundred bucks. This is a beauty. Six. What 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 can you say about Hank Aaron? I mean, the guy's just pure legend. Um, I don't know if people would put him in the same category as Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, Willie Mays. Um, I personally do. I think he's in that room with those guys in the top five of all time. Um, I just think the productivity and the consistency. Oh, my goodness. I mean, just let's look at his. Oh, I don't have the career stats on there. Yeah, but by 1959, he had over 1,100 hits. Um, he had 205 doubles, 179 home runs, 617 RBIs, and a 323 batting average. I mean, in 1959, he hit 355. 39 home runs and 123 RBIs and 223 hits. I don't know who the MVP was in 1959, but you can make a case that Hank Aaron should have been. <laughs> so this card's worth a little bit of money in a six. I don't know. This is upwards of 500 bucks, I think. So love that card. That's a great card. And then last but not least, the Hank Aaron uh, Sporting Magazine or Sport Magazine um, 60 All-Star. This came out on a 6.5, which I think is pretty good considering how old the card is. I mean, it's, I don't know, 1960, 62 years old. That's not bad. So those are the cards that I got. Um, they're uploaded into My Slabs. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at my My Slabs page, definitely go check it out. Oops. And... Uh, um, maybe there'll be something there that sparks your interest and you'll be interested in bidding on something. Usually I do best offer on my slab. So, um, I try to price point it a little above the comp and then put, uh, uh, below the comp, a best offer number so that we can kind of hit in the middle. Sometimes people want to get cards for like really cheap and I'm not really into that, especially vintage. Um, you know, the vintage stuff, they just, it's hard to find it. And I think I got quite a bit of it, actually. I'm blessed in that way. I'm very fortunate. So if you want it, uh, you're going to have to pay fair market value for it. Um, but I'm not trying to gouge you either. You know, I'm not trying to sell stuff for ridiculous prices. Just want to be able to price the cards fairly. And if anyone wants to buy it, they can, they can purchase them. All right, that's all I got for tonight. Uh, might do another video a little bit later. You never know. Might do a box break. I was thinking of opening up a box of 93 Flare or a box of 1990 Leaf. But um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. All right, peace out. One love, folks.